Good afternoon. My name is Deacon Peter Brouse from St. Louis de Marillac, and I'm here to do the gospel reflection for Sunday, May 3rd, uh, this coming Sunday, the fourth Sunday of Easter. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate, but climbs over elsewhere, is a thief and a robber, but whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice as the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, the Pharisees did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, Amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. The images that prevail in the gospel passage we just heard are of a shepherd and of the sheep and of the sheepfold gate. Three images that were easily understood by the people in Jesus's time. But in today's society, being compared to a sheep might make some of us uncomfortable because sheep are, and there is really no easy way to say this, imminently stupid animals. They need a shepherd because they are so easily getting in trouble. They might wander off. They might be scattered or get lost because of a predator. Or if they're on a hill, they might simply just fall over and be unable to get up. The vulnerability of sheep is particularly important to consider when we think about today's gospel passage, because sheep needed good shepherds. And just as there are good and bad employees today, in the time of Jesus, there were good shepherds and also bad shepherds. This is also something that the people in those times would have understood. A good shepherd could name each sheep. And as we heard in the passage, they knew their master's voice by heart, the way our family dog may know our voice. Good shepherds would search and search for one lost sheep. Or if one fell over onto its back, the shepherd would take his crook and using the big curve at one end, easily maneuver that sheep back onto its feet. And at night, when the sheep were in an enclosure, in the sheepfold, the good shepherd would sleep at the entrance gate. And if wolves or other predators were ready to pounce, the good shepherd would use his staff as a weapon to protect the sheep from the predators. But as there were good shepherds, there were also bad shepherds. Perhaps they were people hired at an inexpensive rate who were not shepherds at all. And because they did not know or care about sheep or how to deal with them, they would actually wind up scattering the sheep. And many sheep went missing. Or sometimes an uncaring bad shepherd would drive the sheep off so their jobs would become easier. Worse still, these bad shepherds might simply run away when wolves or other predators approach the flock. And let us also consider the image of the sheepfold gate, because in this gospel passage, Jesus refers to himself as the gate for the sheep. Some scripture scholars maintain that by referring to himself as the gate, Jesus is directly challenging Israel's religious authorities, whom he refers to as thieves, and robbers, Pharisees, scribes, and elders who put their own prestige and interest 
the head of the people they were called to shepherd. Everything described in this gospel passage put in context makes sense, but what are we supposed to do with it? What is in this gospel passage for us? Perhaps we might think about the passage within the context of Jesus' messages to his followers, a message to all of us that extends beyond this gospel passage, because we know that Jesus calls his followers, all of us, to act, to be active disciples, to carry his message to the ends of the earth. That, I believe, really means that he is calling us to be good shepherds. How can we make that connection in our own lives? Some of the connections are easy to identify and to understand. Parents are clearly called to be good shepherds for their children, pointing the way for them, helping them stay out of trouble, helping them when they do get into trouble. Husbands are called to be good shepherds to their wives and wives good shepherds for their husbands. We do things to support one another. We search for one another in times when we may feel lost. Some of the connections are not as easy to identify or to understand. Are supervisors at work called to be good shepherds in the mold described by this gospel story? Think of some of the recent events in our society when business leaders shepherded their organizations badly, putting profit before honesty and integrity. How differently might things have turned out if those same business leaders performed as good shepherds, or consider the politics of our country. How better would things be if our political leaders were shepherds in the mold of the good shepherd, Jesus Christ? And perhaps these connections might make us uncomfortable when we are really honest with ourselves. Maybe it's our bad habits that may negatively influence others. Maybe we tend to complain about our coworkers or our neighbors without thinking about the discord that our complaints create. Or perhaps we don't use the gifts that God has given us for the benefit of those around us. Surely not one of us can believe that Jesus' criticism of the religious authorities of his day is meant only for political or spiritual leaders in those times and for people who are not good enough because that criticism is really a warning for each one of us. Every person has many of God's children in his care. The man or woman who empties our trash at work, the child in the row behind us on a plane or in church who kicks our seat, the annoying non-top, non-stop talker at our dinner table, our old and highly inadequate mother, our very imperfect spouse, our misbehaving children. Each of these is one of God's children, and each of them is in our care, a little, or maybe even a lot. All of these are people we ourselves shepherd. So let us be mindful of the message Jesus gives us in today's gospel passage. We are called to be both gate and shepherd to the people in our lives. We pray for the grace to make our motives pure and unselfish. We pray for the humility to put the interests of those we are called to shepherd above our own. We give thanks for Jesus, our good shepherd. May we have the grace and humility to be good shepherds for him. Amen.